In this lecture, we are going to create a new controller, which will be the auth controller, and we will create the new register action method so that users can request a user to get created inside our identity database. So let's open Solution Explorer and create a new controller. So expand controllers, right click on controller, add a new controller. We will use the API templates and we will use the API controller empty template. So click on add and provide a name for your controller. So I will say this will be the auth controller.cs. So click on add. So this is the new controller and it goes by the URL forward slash API forward slash auth. And we want to create a register method and it will be a post method because we are creating some information and we need input from the user as part of the body. So it will be a post method. I'll write a comment. So post and this will go to forward slash API forward slash auth forward slash register. This will be the URL for this method. So let's start with the structure first. So public task of type I action result. It will be the register method. And let's use the async keyword as well. So the register method will be a post method. So let's annotate that with the HTTP post keyword and also add the route attribute. So the route for this one will be register as you can see over here. So API auth register. When someone wants to create a new user, they will have to supply us with the username and password information. So we will have to create a request DTO for this register method. So let's expand on models. Inside the DTO folder, let's create a register request DTO. So right click, add a new class and call it register request DTO.cs. So this class will have two things. One will be the username, which will also be treated as an email. And the second one will be the password. So properties. The first one is a string of uh, username. And the second one is also a string called password. The both are required attributes. So let's use the required attribute on the username and the password. And because we want to use username as an email address as well. So we will define this as an email address. So let's use another attribute, which will be the data type attribute. And the data type for this is data type dot uh, email address. And similarly for the password, we'll say this is data type dot password. So these are the two input parameters that we need. And we can now use the register request DTO inside the register action method. This will come from the body parameter. So let's use from body inside square brackets. And we'll say we want to use the register request DTO and give this a name as well. Now that we are passing the information as an input parameter, we now want to register a user and we use the user manager class that identity provides us to register a user or to create a user. So we have to inject the user manager class. So let's create a constructor for the controller and inject the user manager class and this comes from the package that we installed which is microsoft.aspnetcore.identity and because in the previous uh, lecture we injected identity into our solution we will get this user manager class and we can use this class to create the new user and it takes a type of user which is identity user and give it a name and let's press control dot to create and assign this field. So now we can use user manager class over here. And let's say await user manager dot create async method. And if you see the create async method, it takes as the second type an identity user type and the password. 
So we have the password already. We want to create the identity user from this request that we have over here. So let's create a new variable called identity user is equal to new identity user. And in here, we want to specify two things. One is the username, which is coming from the register DTO. So register request DTO dot username and email will also be the same. So this dot username. So we have identity user now. We can supply that to the create async method and the user manager class will take care of everything else and will create us a new user. So let's apply the identity user and the password which comes from the register request DTO. So we will close that with a semicolon and accept the result which is an identity result. So let's create a variable called identity result is equal to whatever is coming from here from the user manager class dot create async method. Now we will use this identity result to check if identity result dot succeeded. So we have that property over here which says true or false if in case it was a successful response or an unsuccessful response. If it was a, a successful response, now we want to add roles to this user. So now that we are able to create the user, we also want to add the roles to this user, which is if you remember the reader role or the writer role or sometimes both. So we also want to accept the roles from the register request. So let's open that class again. And as a third property, we will use it a as a string array and say these are the roles property. So we will accept roles from this property and then we will say if the user has passed us any role, then we want to add these roles inside the user and assign it to the user. And that is really easy to do as well because the user manager class also provides us with another method and that is let's call the user manager class dot add to roles async the second one and in here we will provide the identity user that we want to assign roles against which is over here so let's use the identity user and after that we want to send the i enumerable of type string of roles so let's use what we have in the register request so register request eto dot roles and finish that off we can also have a check to say if roles from the register request so register request dto dot roles is not equal to null then do that and you can say at least have one value and this dot any so we can use a the roles property dot any and then perform the addition assigning of the roles action over here. So we are using the add to roles async method and let's capture the result from here, which is also an identity result. So you can use the same identity result and assign it the value again. And again, we will check if the result was successful. So we'll say if identity result was a successful response by looking at the succeeded property, then we will say back to the user that the user was registered successfully. Now you can go on and you know continue with the login process. So we can return an OK response and maybe a message that user was registered or something like that, then please log in. Right. And you can you know customize your message if you want to. And finally, if the result was unsuccessful from anywhere, we will return a bad request. We won't specify much, but we'll say uh, something went 
wrong and we'll just keep it over there simple as that so we have created the register method and it's now time to test the solution so i will run the application now we see another endpoint which is the auth endpoint and inside that we have a post method for register we want to try it out and this is the request properties that it needs it needs a username a password and roles as well if we come back i just want to confirm that we have given the data type for password as an email address which is wrong so i will update that to say this is data type dot password instead so i will rebuild and apply my changes now we can test the register endpoint so try it out and i will give a username which is an email address so i will call this the reader email address because i'm giving this the reader role so reader at nzvox.com the password will be reader at one two three something that satisfies the password uh, that we had set up in the program.cs file so it has to follow the password criteria that we had set up in the solution so if your solution is failing because of that uh, please debug to see if you have set up something different uh, to the solution that we have and make sure your password requirements are clear and you're following that so I have the username password and the role that I will give to this user will be the reader role. With that, let's click on execute and see what happens. Uh, ideally, this should get created inside the database with the new role. So if I come down, we get the 200 success response back, which means this user was created and also the role for this user was created as well. So let's confirm that by going to the database. So we have the ASP.NET users table. Let's select on that. And we have the new user created, which is the reader at nzvox.com. So the user is there. And let's see if the user was able to get the reader role, which is in the ASP.NET user roles table. So select on that. And we see one record in here, which is the user ID and the role ID because this is the mapping table. So this is the same user ID as we have over here, which ends with 46C and the role ID ends with E3E, which is the role for the reader table. So if I select on the ASP.NET roles table, E3E is the reader role over here. So we have successfully created a user and also successfully assigned a role to this user. So the register functionality is now working as expected. In the next lecture, let's come back and work on the login functionality.